designer behind new leaf designs and I'm so excited to be doing the cozy moments make along together with you guys in the Scape Peace Facebook groups. Now the cozy moments make along is a make along for the cozy moments shawl which is this lace shawl and it's made in Scapius Whirl, so one of these cakes. And this lace shawl is a lace sampler shawl, which means there are eight different lace patterns for you to try. And the make along will be published in several parts, so in four parts. And we'll be working our way through this shawl together and I'll be posting video tutorials of every lace pattern and of course uh, the pattern itself will be on my blog. The first part of the pattern will be up on February 14th, then the second part on February 21st, the third part on February 28th and then the last and fourth part on March 6th. Now if you'd like to work ahead the full pattern, so the entire shawl pattern is also available for purchase in my Ravelry store, which I will link below. And up until the start of the cal, so uh, Mao, so up until February 14th, it's available for a promotional price. So be sure to check that out. So the Cozy Moment Shawl is aimed at intermediate knitters. But if you're, say, an adventurous beginner, <laughs> you can totally knit along with us. Uh, we start really easy and then it gradually gets a bit more um, advanced. And as I said, I have video tutorials of every lace pattern and of the cast on, so you'll be able to knit along with me. And you'll be able to ask any questions you have in the Escape Use Facebook groups. There is one group for the Dutchies, so it's all Dutch spoken. And there is one international group, so the main, main language is English there. So you can ask any questions you have in the Facebook groups and I'll come and help you. And I'm sure if I'm not there instantly, then maybe someone else can help you out as well. But I'll try to be there as soon as I can. And... Um, of course, also post any pictures. I love to see progress of your shawls. I'd love for you to share your cozy moment with your shawl because oh, seriously, lace knitting is so relaxing and addictive. It's, it um, occupies your brain, like it doesn't allow for any other thoughts. So it's completely relaxing, but it also means you should not get distracted. <laughs> because it's easy to make a mistake, but don't panic, I've got you, because I also have a video on putting in lifelines and all kinds of other tips and tricks to help you along the way. So first things first, which yarn will you use for your cozy moment shawl? Now, the original shawl is made in Scapius World Turkish Delight, which is this whirl right here so you might recognize this color from a previous Scapius patterns um, it's a beautiful color and I just love how it looks in this shawl so this shawl is knit from the outer thread towards the inner thread as it starts with the purple but you can totally do it the other way around I really love the strawberry pink red border I just oh, I just love it oh and let me tell you about the size as well it's quite big so it's really a nice shawl to wrap up in it's 135 centimeters wide and 60 centimeters deep so it really gives you a lot of room to snuggle up in um, now I also had I also had a second sample made which is this beautiful blue one and this one is made in the Scapius Whirl Ombre Turquoise Turntable so this one is also made from the outside to the inside I think it's just gorgeous and I'm so excited for your versions because there are so many Scapies whirls and Scapies. 
his whirly gigs. <laughs> so, so I'm going to be knitting two versions together with you guys. I'm going to be knitting Escape these Whirl version. And this is my color of choice. Is, is it the Kiwi Drizzle? Yes, the Kiwi Drizzle. And this is a woolly whirl. So it's, where is it? 70% cotton and 30% wool, whereas a regular escape piece whirl has 60% cotton and 40% acrylic. But still, it just feels so, so nice. But um, I just prefer a little bit of wool. So I'm, I'm already starting with the tutorial videos, so I've knitted a little bit, a little baby shawl. Little baby. Um, I don't know where that came from. Um, yes, so a tiny baby shawl. And I'm so excited to see how this color turns out. But, as I said, I'm knitting two samples together with you. And my second sample is going to be a Scapia Swirly Cake. Oh, I love it so much. Let me show you the cake. Oh my god. <laughs> it's so huge. It's almost the size of my head. Yeah. So Escape is Whirly Gig. It's kind of shiny, so there I think you can see it there. Whirly Gig. So it has the same amount of meters as a Escape Piece Whirl, which means we can totally knit the shawl with Escape Piece Whirly Gig. So it has 1,000 meters. It's 450 grams. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> and it's 20% alpaca and 80% wool, so it's lovely and wooly, and I can't wait to wrap this around my shoulders because I really get cold, so I need some wool. And uh, yeah, I just can't wait. This is the colorway Teal to Ombre, and I'm knitting from the inside out. And I already knit my swatch with this, and also from the Kiwi Drizzle, let me show you those. This is my Whirl Kiwi Drizzle swatch, and this is my Whirly Gig swatch. Unblocked, because we measure our gauge unblocked, um, as that is the most accurate way of saying if your gauge is close to mine and if it's not you can always tweak it by blocking so um, so if your unblocked gauge is like my unblocked gauge you can you have so much room for manipulation when blocking so if you want your shawl to be a little bit bigger you have you totally have the room for that um, yeah, so I'm knitting this whirly gig version. I've just completed the first lace chart. And I'm dying to knit ahead, but I have to, um, of course, film the tutorial videos along the way. So I get to do a tiny bit of knitting every day. Um, yeah, but I can't wait for you guys to cast on your shawls so we can all see those tiny shawl babies. Yeah, I'm just so excited. And if you're going to be sharing your shawl progress, be sure to tag it with hashtag Cozy Moments Shawl and hashtag Val Mal because this make-along launches on Valentine's Day, so it will be our Valentine's Mal or Val Mal. So will you be my Valentine? <laughs> Oh, I know it's a it's so cheesy, but I had to I had to I mean, yeah, Tammy and I came up with a load of puns. So Will you be mine? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yes So we're gonna have so much fun during this make along and in the remainder of this video I'm gonna tell you a bit more about swatching so 
it's essential that you knit a swatch because you don't want to run out of yarn. Although both of my testers who made these sample shells had 20 grams of yarn left over, that doesn't mean that you'll have that much yarn left over. So, um, but I'm fairly sure that you'll have enough yarn to knit a nice big swatch. So, uh, for your swatch, for both the whirl and the whirly gig, I want you to cast on 40 stitches on the recommended needle, which is a three millimeter, or I think 2.5 US. I think that's 2.5 US, but three millimeter needle for the whirl and a 3.5 millimeter needle, which is US size four for the whirly gig. That will give you a really nice drape for both fabrics, uh, for both yarns. Um, so for your swatch, cast on 40 stitches. And for the first couple rows, you're gonna knit in garter stitch. If you take a closer look at my swatch, you'll see that there's garter stitch at the beginning, garter stitch at the end, and also a few stitches of garter stitch at each side and that keeps the swatch from curling up too much because as I said we're gonna be um, measuring our gauge unblocked and if you just knit stockinette it will curl up like crazy so adding those garter edges all around gives a nice little border and it will it will not lay completely flat, but it won't curl up as much. And that's what we want. So knit about, and I'll include all of this info in my blog post about getting ready. And I'll link all of that below, so don't worry. So you're going to want to knit six rows of garter stitch. Then on the next row, which is going to be our wrong side, you're going to knit four, knit four, then purl until you have four stitches left and then knit those last four stitches. Then on the right side, you just knit every stitch. Easy peasy. Then on the wrong side, knit four, purl until last four stitches, knit four. And that's gonna be your main section of the gauge swatch. Knit in that pattern until your gauge swatch measures 10 centimeters long from the socket portion, so don't include the garter edge because you can't measure your gauge on garter stitch because we're, we want to measure it on stockinette. So, so knit until it's 10 centimeters long and then knit another five or six rows of garter stitch. Um, oh, I think it's five. Yes, knit five rows of garter stitch and then you cast off because that's your um, that's your sixth row essentially. But it doesn't matter that much. We want the thing that matters is the stockinette inside. And I'm gonna give you a few tips on measuring your gauge. This was a complete game changer for me when I first learned it. So I hope it will help you because uh, it really uh, made it so much easier for me to measure my gauge. So for measuring your gauge, you of course need a tape measure. I got a really beautiful one by Kohana and it has one white side and one tape side. Um, so I have that one. And we will also need two needles, and by that I mean darning needles. So take those and come and join me for measuring your gauge. So let's take a look at our swatch. I'll just get two needles and my measuring tape. So you're going to want to measure your gauge ideally in the second half of your swatch because that's usually where you've gotten a bit used to working with the yarn so your second half is more likely to have an accurate gauge um, and you want to not measure your gauge 
on any of the edges. So I'm just going to measure right here. like this so I'm not including those edge stitches because um, they are not likely to give me an accurate gauge because it's on the edge and it's adjacent to these garter stitches so I'm just gonna hold that and I'm gonna line up my measuring tape so that the line at zero lines up with a start of a stitch so in between two stitch columns i'm going to take my first needle and insert that between those stitch columns then i'm going to lay my measuring tape flat and i'm going to place another needle at the line of 10. So I'm just going to hold that in place and insert my needle there. And now we can take away our measuring tape and we can just count the stitches in between the needles. And I find that much easier than trying to count from your measuring tape and you're maybe moving the measuring tape a little bit so this really helps with that so I'm just gonna count from here so three six nine ten three six nine ten and then one two three four five okay so I have 25 stitches per 10 centimeters I'm gonna take these needles out so you might want to write that down somewhere and then we're gonna do the same for measuring the row gauge oh I seem to have knit a swatch that is a tiny bit too small can you see that The stockinette portion is almost exactly 10 centimeters, which may not be super accurate, but let's count it nonetheless. So I'm just going to count all of the stitches, all of the rows in here. So that's 3, 6, 9, 10. 3, 6, 9, 10, so 20, 3, 6, 9, 10, and then 2 stitches, so that's 32. Um, but that may not be super accurate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure, let's see, I'm going to measure 9 centimeters. Starts at that stitch. And then to there. Right. There. Okay. So, one, two, three, ten, one, two, three, ten, so that's twenty, and then three, six, seven, eight. Okay, so I have twenty-eight stitches per nine, nine centimeters. So we just measured our gauge, or my gauge, for nine centimeters because my swatch was just a little bit too small so for nine centimeters I have 28 stitches then you divide those 28 stitches by nine so that's your stitch gauge so that's 3.1 so 3.1 stitches per centimeters then you increase that by 10 to get to 10 centimeters again and then I have 31.111 stitch per 10 centimeters so that's my row gauge here 
So between 31 and 32 rows per 10 centimeters and my stitch gauge was 25. Now in other places in my swatch I have measured 26 stitches per 10 centimeters so it varies a little bit even within one swatch. So try to uh, measure your gauge at different spots and then take the middle number. Um, so what do you do if your gauge is off? Say you have too many stitches per 10 centimeters. So say you have 28 stitches per 10 centimeters. That means that your gauge is tighter because you're able to squish more stitches into the same 10 centimeters. So that means your shawl will be a little bit smaller. Um, so in that case, you can try again with a bigger needle. So if you if you knit this swatch on three millimeter needles, try again on three and a half or maybe 3.25. Um, although three and a half would probably be your best bet. Um, so you can try again with that needle and see if that gives you a closer gauge. If on the other side, say you have 23 or 24 stitches per 10 centimeters. That means your stitches are wider. Um, so that means that your shawl will become bigger than mine, which may not be an issue, but because our shawl is made up of lace patterns, which, you know, have holes in them, you might not want these holes to be super big. So that might be a reason to consider to knit with a smaller needle so you'll get an accurate gauge and will not and your shell will not be super holy. Um, so those are all things to consider. Uh, if you are happy with your gauge then just give your swatch a little wash. Uh, just soak it in it with uh, some wool wash, lay it flat to dry and then see if you like the fabric because that's the most important thing. It's, it's going to be your shawl, so if you're happy with the fabric, go for it. Now, if you have any questions regarding this already, just uh, either post them down below this video or post them in the Scape Facebook groups and I'll come and help you out. And I want to see those yarn choices. So I want to see which colors you're using. If you're using Scape Use Whirl, if you're using Scape Use Whirly Gig, if you're starting from the inside or from the outside, I want to know. So post those pictures in the Scape Use Facebook groups and also on Instagram with the hashtag Cozy Moments Shawl and hashtag Val Mal for our Valentine's make-along. And I'm so excited for this make-along. I hope you are too, and I'll see you in my next.